Hey everyone, today I will show you how to pasteurize yourself in a mushroom pasteurizer. Is that good? I don't know. It is the end of an era and I am getting ready to discard of my giant mushroom pasteurizer steam machine. Yeah, I've used this system for a while now. It's probably been at least a year and a half. I actually had two of them and I'm already cut up and destroyed the other one. And I'm getting ready to do the same with this guy. But before I do that, I wanted to show you how I built it. So if you want to build a giant mushroom steam pasteurizer, if, if you even know what that is, uh, you can. All right, so bear with me as I try to describe all the bits and pieces to this. I gotta figure out where to start. Here's our barrel. Here is our propane burner. Here's our hose line. And then the vessel I will put all the mushroom blocks in to be pasteurized. So the idea here is we can hook up the propane tank to the propane burner, hit it with the lighter, then this will get hot, create steam inside the vessel, push it out the hose into the trough, creating a sauna for the mushrooms to cook in. All right, now that that's on, we can begin to fill this trough up do one last final cook before this ends up in the garbage. So back to the barrel. I have these fasteners, these clamps that I will put around the lid and the lip of the barrel. There is a little gusset that goes all the way around the barrel to seal it and help contain the steam as much as possible. Like I was saying, I used to have two troughs and I had another hose hooked up to this cool little ball valve. I had gotten rid of that trough, so I no longer use this, but I'm gonna salvage it and probably use it on something else. I also have a float valve and this is just so I can hook up the water line and not have the entire barrel fill up with water. It only goes to a certain level and stays at that level. So the water level can only be equal, less than or equal to the height of the float valve. There's many different hose fittings you can attach to your barrel. I have some little gaskets, little rubber rings that I have hooked up to the inside of the barrel and screwed with another little bolt in the other side of the barrel. This one is like a self-locking pipe fitting thing. I also have a little hose clamp on it for extra security. Then I have some insulation going onto my hose line. This hose line is very long. I should have made it shorter. It would have made it more streamlined, but I have elevated it using a bucket so the water doesn't get trapped or the steam doesn't condensate and the water doesn't get trapped. It either drips into our basin here or is steam getting pumped out into the trough. All right, I hope that wasn't too boring and I hope it kind of describes how the hose line and the barrel works. It's basically just a boiler. Just in this case, we're using the steam. Ooh, the light's bright. Anyways, here's the vessel itself. It is a 160 gallon water trough. You can get them at Home Depot. That is the best deal, I think, at Home Depot. You can check me on that. I know Tractor Supply might have it, uh, Lowe's possibly, I don't really know. But Home Depot's where I got mine. The insulation also from Home Depot. This is like an aluminum bubble wrap. It works really good actually, I was very surprised. The next thing I had added was a, just a nice sliver of one inch rigid board on both sides of the cooker just maintains a little more heat and that's within the aluminum bubble wrap. The next thing I added to the trough was, oh, it's raining, was the standoffs. I tried to find some cinder blocks as standoffs and the cinder blocks are a little too tall. So I found some slimmer ones that don't take as much real estate up inside of our vessel. Camera died, but I'm back. In addition to those thin cinder blocks as standoffs, I added a layer of chicken wire on top and that's just to fill in all the nooks and crannies around the cinder blocks and so the bags don't seep into the very bottom of our trough. The next thing I have to show you is what is connected to our hose line. And that is a little T hose pipe fitting that I have clamped on the other side using one of those little fasteners. And then out into our trough, I have the two prongs going multiple different directions to cover this boy full of steam. And that's another reason why I have the standoff, because without that, the steam would just get sopped up by one block and it would just, there wouldn't be a very equal distribution of the heat within our trough. The next, we're gonna need some holes to drain it because it will fill up with water uh, if you don't have any holes. The holes I have put inside of this trough are just punctured through the side. I have one at the bottom as well. It's good if you can put the trough on the lip, on some sort of lip or elevate it slightly. That's just to make sure those blocks don't get covered with water or submerged with water and that the trough doesn't fill up with water because one, you'll block your steam port, two, your blocks 
may get flooded and we don't want that. Last but not least, I had added a system to cool the block. So it is insulated and in the winter, it definitely needed that. And in the summer, it's good to keep it at a higher temperature for longer. We use less propane, yada, yada, yada. It is important though, that we get our blocks out of the cooker and they are not super hot. Otherwise, if you inoculate them while they're too hot, you'll kill the mycelium or you're just waiting longer to inoculate your mushroom blocks. Uh, I'm not gonna get into what that is. If you don't know, check out some of the videos, either mine or someone else's. But yeah, so to combat the heat inside the vessel and cool them off in the summertime, I had added this uh, shark bite fitting. This is just some sort of fitting I got at Home Depot. It connects to a standard hose line and you could turn it on and off at the trough. And all that's going to do is run water slowly through all this hosing, which you can intermingle between all the blocks, therefore cooling the blocks off quicker than they would without. Obviously, I drilled some holes so it has a way to come out the other side of the trough. It's a pretty simple build. You don't need anything crazy. You don't even need to, ooh, 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 ooh. you don't even need to add any sort of temperature thermometer at the top of your barrel. You can if you want. I had planned on making this barrel originally some sort of pasteurizer, uh, pasteurizing vessel. I didn't. But yeah, I hope this video is helpful. It's just a quick overview. I'm gonna fill up the trough now with mushroom blocks. For those who've stuck around till the end of the video, thank you very much. Like, subscribe if you want to. There's some really cool content coming out in the future. I have built a robotic arm for my mushroom bagger, bagger, which is a work in progress, but it's pretty freaking cool. Also, I'm making a mushroom software tool for all you farmers out there. Hopefully it'll be really useful. Go check out mountainbeemushrooms.com online. Type it in the URL, and it will bring you to my page. Yeah, and that's it. See you guys. Uh, well, hopefully that concludes the video.